Hello everyone! This is Alchemisted, and this is Star Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt. I think I can hear hell freezing over. Let's get the elven out of the room out of the way, shall we? It's been a while. I went on a hiatus just before... The launch of Legacy of Romulus? And I've stayed on hiatus ever since. And only half, like, and only half that time, it was because this game was pissing me off. Which this game has been since this summer. I think I think I've made my stance on them going the direction of Enterprise for their bold new storyline clear. But in case you didn't watch the vlog where I talked about it or the previous Star Trek Online footage I uploaded, where I talked about it even longer. I don't like the Temporal Cold War. It's one of the worst storylines Star Trek had, that has ever been produced for the franchise. It, it's the most half-assed, ridiculous storyline that has ever been filmed for Star Trek, and it was over. It was over. The first thing Manny Cotto did when he took over the reins for Star Trek Enterprise was kill the Temporal Cold War. It was the first thing he did. It was something he had to do. Because as a nice little goodbye to the Star Trek franchise, Berman and Braga basically screwed him over by destroying the ending of Zero Hour and throwing space Nazis at him. Do something with this shithead. Out the door. And all this, and oh yes, those space Nazis are where we're going with this storyline. I hate that it's the Temporal Cold War. I've seen it coming since Doomsday Machine. I was so depressed that this is where they were going to take the game. And I was pleading in that video, go watch Doomsday Machine. I was pleading in that episode of Rise of the Red Shirt for them not to do that. For them not to take this in the direction of the Temporal Cold War. It's season 11! We're doing the Temporal Cold War. Why? Why would you do this? But you can watch those videos if you want to hear my full thoughts. I'm not going to spend an hour talking about it like I honestly did there. In fact, I think I cut a bit of my... Let's go ahead and call it whining out for time. But yes, this is, uh, once again, Rise of the Red Shirt, Back from the Dead as it were, and uh, by popular demand, and this is the... No guardrails here. There really should be guardrails. I, th I think the non-OSHA compliance was a bit of a point of complaint when the uh, Fleet Starbase had come out, but this is the new and improved Origin Station. Uh, knocked the I've knocked the dust off of it, prettied it up a little bit. It's got a dance floor. And, uh, it's nice. It's, it's a nice place to hang out now. Not as sparse. Still need to unlock a bunch of stuff, but... Things are moving again. <clears throat> that seems to be the trend. Is, uh, we're getting things moving. I really wish you could take a turbo lift to that. That'd be cool. I really wish you could fight something down there. It's just, look, you gotta, we're, we're gonna have to get something out of the way. It's the Star Wars fan in me that wants to fight something down there. Like, it's friggin' Empire Strikes Back, because this is like begging, this like screams to the video gamer in me, boss fight arena, you know? Like, epic climactic duel, you know? Like the, like the video game or like every Metal Gear game ever, where it's like two people in a fist fight on top of like something way high up. Like... That's just what it says. And the Star Wars fan in me is go is 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 so happy right now with all like with sort of the renaissance that franchise is going through. I'm hoping Star Trek undergoes the same renaissance, but the decision making behind that new series coming out next year does not seem very encouraging. And I'll talk about that as we go on. 
You know what? No, fuck it. I'll talk about it now. The decision making of that show looks ridiculous. Like here. He, so here's here's what they're gonna do. They're gonna air the first episode on live TV. Okay, good. Off off to a good start. You're gonna air it on CBS, attract viewers, and then they're going to show every episode after that for the entire rest of the series run on a walled off platform that is CBS's. They're like CBS is going to start like an online network essentially. They're basically doing what Paramount tried to do with UPN except with an online network that you have to pay a subscription fee for. The problem with this is that people are already paying subscription fee fees for Netflix, Hulu, Crunchyroll, etc. HBO Go, they're paying subscription fees for so you're going to try and this is why I say it's like what Paramount was trying with UPN. You're going to try and sell an online network on Star Trek alone. <laughs> because that's that's exactly what Paramount did. Is they advertised like there were a bunch of like lo like launch shows on UPN. Uh let's talk about Moesha. Um Moesha Moesha Nowhere, man. I remember that. Um, Moesha, Nowhere, man. The Sentinel, maybe. Eh. Honest, honestly, at that at the time this was happening, I was more interested in what they were airing on Saturday mornings, you know. Um, and they had some, and they had some good stuff. They. They had, um... Huh. No, they didn't. <laughs> no, they didn't. I think... The one thing... I think they may have had Tekaman Blade in the mornings, but it was so heavily boulderized and so heavily edited that it was basically like the four kids cut, where it's basically a completely different show. They had Jumanji... Jumanji? Did they have Extreme Ghostbusters? If they did, then Extreme Ghostbusters is probably the best thing that they had. I don't remember if it aired on UPN, though. In fact, I'm almost sure it didn't. But yeah, that's... Homeboys in Outer Space. I don't know, like, that was, that was a primetime show on UPN. You can see where this is going. Star Trek, like they had Star Trek Deep Space Nine and Star Trek Voyager airing side by side uh, for the lion's share of Voyager's run. And then after Voyager was over, they had Star Trek Enterprise. And when Star Trek Enterprise got canceled, well, it, when it got moved to the Friday night death slot and then canceled, that's when the UPN became CW. Or it merged with the WB and they became CW. So basically, the, when it canceled Star Trek... It ran off of Star Trek's popularity for the, its entire lifetime, and when Star Trek Enterprise got shit-canned, the network died. So, C CBS is trying to do the exact same thing. They're trying to sell this as the Star Trek network, essentially. This is the network, the place where you go to watch Star Trek. But they're doing it as a walled garden with a subscription fee that people are already paying for everything else. So, you're going to sell one show for, I don't know how many dollars a month. I assume the standard going rate is, like, the average is from, like, 9 to $15, I guess, if I had to ballpark it for, like, all, for aggregate. But that's for, like, aggregate stuff, like Netflix and Crunchyroll and Hulu. You're going to be selling your network. I don't know how much they're going to sell this network for. Um when people are already paying just as much for far more content. So, this is at a time when people in the middle class, particularly of the United States, um, there are countries with much stronger, the much stronger middle class, um, but the United States, it's rough. Disposable income is not... It is a precious thing right now, and you know it's it's sort of a, like 
what do you want to spend it on? Do you want to, you know... I don't see people making the decision to pay a monthly fee for one show when they can pay a monthly fee for Netflix instead. So what's going to end up happening is the show is going to end up getting pirated like crazy. And I don't want that to happen, but it's going to happen. So they're going to put themselves in a situation where not as many people as they need are going to be watching this because of that subscription. More people will be watching it through other means, likely. And they're not going to... And it's going to seem like the... Like the audience isn't there for the show. Because this is the reason why so many good science fiction shows would get cancelled on uh, primetime television. Stargate SG-1, uh, Atlantis, Farscape, uh, Stargate Universe. These shows were often watched in groups. People would get together to watch these shows. Um, I know as a kid we would do that for Star Trek. But the problem is when people get together to watch those shows, it doesn't count as individual viewers. It counts as like it's going to just one television set and it looks like one person watching is the logic they apply. And they don't look at maybe there's multiple people watching. That was the theory, anyways, that uh, people, particularly the producers and cast members of Farscape, were thinking, like, we know we've got this huge fan base, but, like, we're wondering why they decided we weren't getting that many viewers. And that leads to stuff getting canceled. And that's my worry for the new Star Trek, is it's going to get stolen, and then it's going to get canceled. I don't want that to happen. I would love for it to be successful. I'd love for Axanar to be successful too, and that's an entirely different bag of worms. Bag of worms? Can of worms. But there it is. I was actually having a, an argument with this. I think it was with ice. Maybe. Like, way back. But my projection is this. Is that within the year, within the first season, you're going to see the show shift to Netflix. That's if the... That's if the management at CBS, the people in charge of the show are, and, like, the distribution of the show have any sense. Because aggregate, it's it's just like selling in a marketplace. If you, if you put your booth in, like, a walled-off area someplace else and charge people admittance to, like, for the privilege of, like, coming in to browse your wares, nobody's gonna shop there. You don't put a shop, you don't put your booth, if you're a merchant, like, in the middle of friggin' nowhere. You put it in a marketplace. That unfortunately means you have to compete with others, you have to yell louder and project farther than other people. But it also means you're, more people are gonna see and hear you, and maybe be interested in seeing what you've got. And that's what they need to do. That's what the aggregate sites have become. Is they are now the forum. That's why Marvel is producing so many shows for Netflix. They, these places have become that forum. They've become the new medium. They are the new media. And they are where you go to sell your content. And to earn money from your content if you're a major studio producing it. So 
so if they're smart, if CBS is smart, then before that first season o- is over, you're going to see it on Netflix. You're going to see the episodes rolling through Netflix. If they're not, I'd be surprised if the show goes on past one season. And, yeah. I would be very surprised. That's a bit grim. That's a bit of a grim prediction for the future of Star Trek, but... Just being 100% real. This looks like the... I don't like this. <laughs> I don't like it. My camera clips through it when I'm running around in the station. Does this have music or is this just like a straight up dance floor? Okay, it does have music. The music's kind of boring. Um, honestly, it'd be nice if Starbases had something akin to Club 47. Because Club 47 used to not be that great. And then they, like, remade it, and... I so wish that, um, <coughs> I so wish that Club 47 was used more, because it really, it, it really is a great looking place, and it seems like a natural place to have lots of intrigue in, like, the echelons of Starfleet Command and what have you. It does seem like the place where that would happen. Meeting, like, Starfleet higher-ups, like, in a nightclub. All incognito. And, like, like unraveling. Like, it, it does seem like that's the use it would get in a show. Is like, that place you would, like, meet with somebody in secret to, like, unravel some conspiracy within Starfleet Command, of which there are millions. If there's one thing Starfleet never runs out of, it's insane admirals. So let's go ahead and get this thing underway. We are going to do the Wasteland storyline, and I can't, I can't, I can't take secrets of Nimbus. That'd be cool. I was going to cover this as my first episode of Rise of the Red Shirt Season 3 back in the day. <coughs> Excuse me. And then Season 3 never happened. So, <laughs> so we're going to start here. Because there's a lot of new content, and uh, I haven't covered most of this yet. The Rom- We're going to be going back through the Romulan arc in this series. Most of it is new. Um, in fact, half of it is new. It's been reduced from, like, 20 missions to, like, 5 And then you got the featured episodes. And then you got the Cardassian missions, which have, similarly, the actual proper Cardassian arc has been reduced to, like, five episodes. Lost and Found. Actually, it's been reduced to four, because Lost and Found... Actually, one, two, three, four. Yeah, four. Four been reduced to four episodes, because Lost and Found is the, um, go to Deep Space Nine mission. So, that's actually going to be a lot to cover. But we'll get through it. So we're going to begin the Lost City of Paradise properly this time. We're going to do it proper, and I'm going to destroy my voice. The owner of the local bar. 
This actually seems like I should be there. Okay. I should be there for this, so we're going to go ahead and fly there. It's It seems more... God damn it! <laughs> I didn't mean to do that. Where's the dilithium mine? Oh, no, that's nowhere near. Actually. First of all, let's get back to the ship. That was the quietest beam out ever. <laughs> Do, 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 do. And I think I can use the transwarp conduit to get fairly close. Okay. Federation space. What is closer? Ryza, Regulus. I think Regulus is much closer. I think that's the closest, so let's go ahead and go there. Or I could have just used my Transwarp. Ah, screw it. I could have Transwarped to New Romulus, but whatever. This system looks pretty crowded. Regulus looks a bit like a busy place. It also looks like a navigation nightmare. This didn't get me closer at all. Regulus, Chipori, Hatoria, Laurentian, Denteri, Veranat. You'd think Nimbus would be labeled. Serenity Prime, Hakona, Kellyan, Chulan, Yurpani. Lean, Irregulous. Where are you? Aldo. Battle Group Omega. Napata. Khalil. Where are you? Where the fuck is Nimbus? Chromie Cluster, Vega System, Laurentian, Sorta. I have lost the Nimbus system. the hell are you doing way up there? Wait, wasn't this system supposed to be like a joint effort between the the big three, the Federation Romulans and Klingons? Because that seems pretty solidly in Federation Romulan space. I'm not sure what the hell the Kling business the Klingons would have over there. Okay, let's speed this up a bit. Quantum slipstream is loud.
just passing the Great Bloom. Should see it ahead. There it is. I do like the encounters that are now popping up. <coughs> I do have a bit of a cough, you probably noticed, but that will not deter me. Or rather, I'm developing a cough. I'm starting to get that itchy feeling in the back of my throat. Let's see. Named the Planet of Galactic Peace in 2267 after the Federation Klingon War, Nimbus 3 was supposed to be the model for a new age of peace and mutual cooperation. It was listed as an inhospitable rock that was soon controlled by gangs and... It was instead, not listed, instead an inhospitable rock that was soon controlled by gangs and beset by violence. After the Vulcan Cyborg briefly occupied the capital of Paradise City in 2287, the Romulans, Klingons, and... Romulans, Klingons, and... Where the hell did I leave off? There we go. Stupid scroll wheel. The Romulans, Klingons, and Federation all pledged funds and assistance to help the planet. The cleanup effort was a failure, and the population rebelled constantly against everyone they saw as authority. The last Starfleet officers were evacuated in 2318. Since then, the planet has been a haven for criminal operations and unchecked violence. Well, prepare to get the shit checked out of you. Because the Waglinde is here. Beam to Nimbus 3. That is one of the junkiest stations ever. I almost wish I could beam to it. That is so annoying. That's from a pilot spec. Alright, so who are we gonna bring? Eight is the first officer, so we're gonna bring third instead. Um, we're gonna bring Soren, because, because. And who else? Who else? Who else? Well, let's see. Pren was a mercenary, so he might know a few people here. Although, being a Breen, the Heat probably wouldn't agree with him very much. Ike would probably be at home here, considering he's a Gorn. Gorn are cold-blooded, and it's super warm. Well, go ahead and bring Ike. Alrighty. Except. for the occasion. This place looks like shit. Yeah. You miss out on, like, the cutscene where you, like, look up at, the, like, the Paradise Lost sign that's been up there for over a hundred years. Seriously, this sign was there in, like, Star Trek V. It's been over a hundred years. Have they been, like, lovingly maintaining the graffiti? Like, has somebody been, like, touching it up for the last hundred years? <laughs> we'll make an example out of you. Um... I'm sorry? No, you won't. That went well for you. Guys, seriously, loosen up. Oh, 
Oh, that's that for that. Welcome to Nimbus. Okay, holster. Not yet in at a point where like most of the dialogue is voice acted, so this is going to be once again hell on my lungs and my throat and my trachea and uh, various other parts of my anatomy I used to speak. Now that funny seeing you folks here. No one seems to bat an eye about our little planet until the Orions get their hands on something nasty. Now between that and the Romulans, this joint is jumping. I want to punch him already. You want info? Sure, I'll give you info. The owner of the local bar, a reformed Borg by the name of Two of Eight, has his ear close to the ground. He can tell you more about the Tal Shiar. Just don't tell too many people I told you, alright? And for this mission, you get Fleet Personnel, a common quality duty officer, which, eh, you could throw it into a Starbase project. Or a lockbox. But you're not going to get the lockbox, are you? Right. Let's go ahead and accept. And, of course, it is not primary, which it should be. I think the last time I recorded this, I was still wearing the Jupiter Veteran. God, imagine how hot that would be here. Starfleet has, of course, classed up their wardrobe since then. Thank you, Thomas, the cryptic cat, for doing so. Um, yeah, I think I gotta talk to this guy. You need information? Okay, so he's not going to finish that sentence. All right. You're here for information. Someone told you I could give it to you. Make it quick. What is a liberated Borg doing out here? <clears throat> I'm not going to ask that question because the Borg assimilate everybody. So, of course, like... Probably some, like, petty crooks got assimilated, too. Or people just down on their luck after being, like, unassimilated, so. I'm looking to meet with some other people who came through here recently. Officers, like myself. I've seen a few people like that come through here. They're always looking for the same things. I'll tell them what I tell you. What I'll tell you. If you're looking for weapons, you're looking for the Syndicate. They do their operations out in the desert. If you want to find these people, head outside of town. You have a tricorder. That should point you in the right direction. What about the weapons? I'll tell you what I told the others. The Thaleron triggers can be found outside of town. That's where the Orions do their trading. We don't have many rules here, but that's one we all follow. Keep trouble outside the walls. Anybody looking for trouble winds up there eventually, one way or another. Other people have been looking for them? People have disappeared in the night. Other people go looking for them and don't come back. Know anything else? And that ends the dialogue. So no, he doesn't. Contest. So did I fail the dialogue? Hang on. I sell drinks here, not information. So it's like myself. What about the weapons? The desert. Then I'll start there. Okay. 
So he just straight up just ignores you and it doesn't finish the dialogue. I don't see how, like, you can't, you shouldn't be able to continue the mission, considering either way you're going to be heading out to the desert, and that's the only other response available is the desert then. So. Looks like a Federation Klingon squad were attacked by scorpions. Oh no! Oh, these aren't like actual scorpions. These are more like fucking rad scorpions. Or Daywin arthropods. Oh no. Now they're just referred to as like sand scorpions. So yeah, I have to scan five tchotchkes. Scan five tchotchkes and rearrange soup cans. Die. 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 We have to kill 20 of these to appease the blood gods at Cryptic. Did I give somebody a friggin' minigun? Oh, looks like fighting off 20 of these isn't gonna be a problem. Done and done. Genocide. Scan remains. Up. Well, we're picking up survivors nearby from both Starfleet and the Klingon Empire. The barkeep must have known they wouldn't make it out here. He did, but he sent them out anyways. This planet really should have a day-night cycle like uh, like Hathon, because I can imagine like this planet at night would look kind of cool. Kind of cool. Look kind of cool. Behave yourself on my ship. Starfleet dog, they say as I rescue them. <laughs> no, now they're being called... I could swear I just saw one called a day one arthropod. I kinda need my help, dude. You really could just, like, shut up and accept the rescue. Like, I could have sworn I saw one that was called a day when arthropod just now. Over here. to rescue you. Okay. Only two people? Or only two groups? Wow. Paradise City. Beam there. Guys! Guys, seriously, loosen up! <laughs> it's cool! I'm a big... <laughs> I'm a grown-ass man. I don't need to have my... I don't need you close enough to hold my hand. Personal space, Jesus. I apologize for the deception. Obviously, it was an error to mislead you. Do not mistake my, my actions. 
Do not mistake my actions to be hateful. I bear no ill will toward you. Besides, the taciturn ex Borg bit always, al almost always works. I cannot be seen to be aiding you. The Orion Syndicate would kill me if they knew. However, if you have the resources to survive in the desert, you might have a chance against the Syndicate. Where are the Thaleron triggers? Where's the trigger? Swear to me! I can only confirm that the Thaleron triggers are in the possession of the Orion Syndicate. I cannot say any more than that. Called a leftover default of cowardice. Or perhaps a strong sense of self-preservation. There's only one man in the town who would be willing to help you, and that is a man who calls himself Law. He does not come out of his home nearby, but I will tell you a way to signal him. If he wants to talk to you, he will. I'll speak with this Law. Honestly, I could probably just beam to my ship and talk with Law at this point, since he's a doff, but... about the signal. Are you just here to annoy me? If you know the signal, then you know I used to be a peacekeeper around here. Well, I'm not signing back up for it. Not after what the Syndicate did to me. Leave me alone. I'm trying to find information about Thaleron triggers. I was told you could help. Thaleron triggers? Why should I help you with that? The Orion Syndicate will kill me if I tell you anything. You should have tried coming here about two years ago. The old me would have helped you in a hurry. Still, you look like you've survived the desert. So you must be strong. Can you guarantee that I'll be safe if I help you? I'll do everything I can to ensure your safety. Hang on. I didn't take the Who Are the Peacekeepers. You don't know what the Syndicate did to me. I don't think I want to, either. Let's see. What were the Peacekeepers? Peacekeepers, ha! That was a novel idea. We were supposed to be the law around here. Most people took it as a joke, but I took it seriously. The Orion Syndicate didn't like that. They dragged me in front of everyone in the town and... Well, I won't go into what Hassan and his crew did to me. All you need to know is that I learned why you don't cross the Syndicate. Thaleron triggers. Can you guarantee that I'll be safe if I help you? I'll do everything I can to ensure your safety. But you enlisted on the Waglinde, buddy. If you wanted safety, you went to the wrong ship. Well, I suppose since you've gotten yourself a fancy starship and all, you might just be able to make a stand against these people. I still have my doubts, especially with all the extra muscle the Syndicate has now. They're even getting help from the Tal Shiar. The Syndicate is using Nashkin... Nash... Nas... Or Nashikin? Nashikin, I think is the right way. The Syndicate is using Nashikin pirates and Gorn as their thugs now. They used to meet in ruins nearby to discuss details, make secret deals, and basically plan how to make our lives miserable. That all stopped when Sandworms decided to make that place their home. I'm sure there's still some data there. You'll be able to find information in the ruins either in the old consoles or in the belly of a sandworm. Now get out of here before anyone sees you talking to me. What a cheerful fellow. I suppose it, he's got good reason to be bitter. Considering he got, like, dragged out in the street, beaten on the way, and then got something as an example to others. Not sure I ever want to find out what that was. Think you can chase us out of town? Buddy, I don't care! So, I want his GPL trade in. Terror Holiday Ornament. Meh. Run the double table! So, this is my big problem with uh, Nimbus. Uh, New Romulus avoids this problem 
Kobali Prime avoids this problem too, but most of the time you spend on Nimbus, you're going to spend running from place to place. This isn't nearly as bad as Tor, mind you. Tor gets ridiculous. Like, to like the, the distances in Tor, because the maps are so much bigger. Like, if, and if you've never, if you've never played the Old Republic, let me, let me break it down. Um, you know how big New Romulus is? Every map in Tor is like that. That's every map. In fact, I think that would be, like, one of the smaller maps in the game, honestly. starting to get something coherent, but we need more information. Yeah, they got me 25%. They really want you to just kill the worms, because I don't think the consoles get you terribly much, although we can try and shoot for one and find out. There's one right here. Thirty percent. Gets you five percent for from one of the consoles. But fighting a group of these things gets you it way faster. So once again, you could do things like the smarter, peaceful way, but in the long run, that's the slower, like a slower, annoying way of doing it. It's intentionally designed to make you kill shit, which is my biggest problem with this game. Like above all the other stuff I complain about, is just sort of like it's not that they could design this to be, like, less of just, like, a constant kill fest. But that's just all that they want it to be. Because, of course, that's what Star Trek, the Star Trek shows were all about. Is that the characters would go to a place, kill everything there, and fly away. Okay, sure. And from that one group, I'm not 62%? Yeah. So yeah, 30% from one group. Actually, I'm pretty sure that is the case in some of the um, original series episodes. But... Point still stands. Pretty sure on multiple occasions they did go to like a place and like they wouldn't they didn't kill everything, but they certainly left a trail of bodies. They've certainly like destroyed their share of civilizations in the original series. Yeah. Guys! <laughs> Jesus! Get off me. And done. That would take significantly longer if you were just doing it to the consoles. We should go back to the bar and decrypt the information on their computer. We shouldn't beam back to our starship and do it secu- Guys. Guys. Guys, you're killing me. <laughs> like, we- like, we have a starship. We couldn't just beam to that and get out of the friggin' desert. Oh no, we gotta use their friggin'- like, can't we transmit it to the ship and can't they decrypt it there? Like, do we have to go back to the bar? What in the hell is going on with the buff AI? What are you doing? Get off me! Get off! Get off! <laughs> 
Soren's picking fights. Like, can't we just, like, transmit it to them say, decrypt this? I got a galaxy-class starship, motherfucker. I got an entire friggin' staff devoted to crypto analysis up there. I've probably got an in... Like, this ship is commissioned in a time of war. I've probably got an entire section of that ship devoted to signal intelligence. Just send them the fucking stuff! Like, do I got a starship with people on it up there, or don't I? This is definitely probably one of the things that would be a DOF mission nowadays. Like, they would incorporate it as a DOF assignment to, like, transmit it to the ship and, like, have somebody on the ship work on it. And then, like, transmit the findings back to your tricorder. This is definitely the sort of thing they would probably do through a DOF assignment, and it would be a much more immersive thing to do then, like, use the junky computers on, like, Nimbus. Let's see. Decipher information from the ruins. Oh, Christ. The access code is a key that includes a mathematical flaw. If you can set up the first two digits to add up to the third digit, and the second and third to add up to the fourth, it should be able to trip the algorithm. I hate these... The blind man sees all. Talk to Horace to find out more about the mysterious message. That was entirely accidental. I was literally just clicking things at random. It's not a hard one to solve, but all of the dialogue puzzles in this game literally just result to just click it until it works. And it, they really aren't that... Like, there's, this, there's this, like a sliding thing puzzle, which I don't like because I just think sliding thing puzzles are annoying, you know, and like just way too easy. You know, they, they feel like too much of a cop out. Probably the one, one of the few exceptions to that is the one that was um, in Onimusha. I don't think that part of Onimusha is up yet, but there was a puzzle in Onimusha, I thought it was going to be way harder than it actually was. I thought it was going to actually, like, have to rebuild the entire thing. But it was like, no, just, like, move these two bits so that they're, like, lined up. Oh, hi, Psylocke. Um, I don't know how you would design, I, I don't know how the mechanics of that work, but I, I don't know how you could, like, combine these two things at any point in this board and it suddenly like opens like a jail cell filling with water but apparently it does and it wasn't that bad um, but by and large yeah sliding thing puzzles are kind of a cop out in my eyes I would like actual puzzles like I would, I would like an actual mini game and we're perfectly capable of that but Jesus she is tall Okay, not that tall. Looks like a friggin' giant from this angle. Now, I remember early on the game, you'd see people like this high. Like, not as high as that thing in the background, but like this high where my cursor is above like the player. Like that, like that tall. Like, you'd see people like that constantly, like early on. Let's talk to Horus. <laughs> Hi! Well, you're alive! Look, how was I supposed to know you were different from the others? I swear, I'll tell you everything you need to know. After all, you might just have the power to stick it to those guys in the Orion Syndicate. And that thing about the blind man, uh, well, yeah, I might have some way of helping you find out more about that. J just don't leave now, alright? People have started to notice me helping you. I don't want to think of what will happen if you leave. By the way, there was somebody here looking for you. Uh, said they were sent here on a previous mission, but now they're looking to join up with your crew. Okay, common quality duty officer. Collect reward. <laughs> if you need it, I've got it. And that's the Lost City of Paradise. I think I might have done this in less time than I did previously. Sad when you just give 
up. Yeah. No, that's not the one I wanted to sit in. I wanted to sit in this one. No. Yeah. How about this one? There you go. I like to keep my back to the wall as much as possible, although this isn't really... Like, I prefer to sit in that one, because in this place, you kind of want to like, sort of, like, not be able to have something come up behind you, is the sense I'm getting. It is a wretched hive of scum and villainy, after all, or a wretched den of scum and villainy, or whatever the line is. You will never find a more wretched hive of scum and villainy. We must be cautious. Get used to that, by the way. Um, I grew up with uh, Star Wars toys. I grew up with Star Trek toys. I like both. And I am not a participant in the pissing contest. I've never really gotten the fan base pissing contest. When I was a kid, I had a much more important rivalry that I was involved with that that I that I liked to participate in. And that was Nintendo versus Sega. Yeah. Got to say things got a lot better after you came around. Yeah. You do kind of like like not Take the shit out of this place. Thanks for thinking. Just don't go changing whatever around here. You do kind of like become the new sheriff in town. Maybe you all aren't so bad. Although nothing's really done with you being the new sheriff in town. Would be nice to see some sort of like lasting repercussion, but then again, that's something that you could say in general about this game, is there would be nice to see some sort of lasting repercussions. And in at least that capacity, I do like the storyline they're telling with the Temporal Cold War. Um, there is a character whom, if you have not seen the uh, Iconian stuff, we'll get to it. But uh, there is a character who is involved with how you deal with the Iconians, who finds out some things that happened along the way, in a like an, a timeline that was altered, and he is a new now a villain. So now they have created a villain that you have met and that you have experienced with, and that you know where they've come from. I like that. I like that one. I don't like the bit where they make him a mugging jackass, because he talks like a Bond villain, like all cryptic villains do. I think it's a job requirement, apparently. Like, every villain is Hakeev. Like, every villain is the same kind of mugging jackass. I don't like that. Don't like it. I don't like it at all. <laughs> But he potentially could be one of the better villains in this game. I didn't mean to do that roll, but okay. Glad you got that out of your system. Can I sit in this? Yes, there we go. Back is to the wall. If you try anything, I'm going to see you. Hey, assholes. <laughs> I'm not locked in here with you. You're locked in here with me. Well, that's the Lost City of Paradise. And wow, this is already going on four gigs, so I'm going to wrap this up because this is going to take forever to render. People are probably like, <laughs> people are like four gigabytes. That ain't shit, I know. But I got a lot of other stuff to record too, so. Space isn't as much of an issue now as it used to be 
but I still want to watch it. But that was Lost City of Paradise. This has been Star Trek Online, Rise of the Red Shirt, finally back, and I'll see you guys later. So, later. Later.